The Blades made a trip to Oakwell on Sunday lunchtime for a 12.30 start. Uh, five changes from Slavisa Jakanovic uh, to the side that were disappointingly beaten at home to Millwall. I uh, saw a big change up front with Ollie McBurney and Lise Mousset, uh, the front two leading the line. Ilman Jundai coming in for the suspended Morgan Gibbs-White. Connor Horahan was dropped with Oliver Norwood coming in and Jaden Bogle out for injury saw the returning George Baldock. Uh, first half, what can you say on it? I'd love to give you some highlights. I'd love to talk you through it. Um, no shots on target from either side other than Lise Mousset's little tame flick at goal five minutes before the break. Um, it's dire. It was terrible. There's literally, I, I don't know, there's no passion. There's no no fight going forward. Uh, it's too many times we're just getting the ball into the final third, passing it back, not having that cutting edge. Uh, John Fleck seemed to yard off the pace, uh, making silly challenges. Uh, Barnes look a dreadful side. And to be fair, we were poor as well. There's absolutely no way that this side is going to be challenging at the right end of the league if we continue playing like that. It's surely time to go back to the tried and tested 5-3-2. Um, disappointing. I'm recording this at half-time. Um, the half-time adverts, more excited in the first half. Hopefully, a bit of life from the Blades, because this game, boy, is it there for the taking. Uh, so, sorry, not much to report. Sorry, it's a bit of a downer. But half-time at Oakwell, Barnsley nil, Sheffield United nil. Hiya, Blades. And so, after what was a pretty poor first half all round, I thought both teams really disappointing. Um, not quite enough quality on show. Um, I'm here to walk us through the second half. So I thought, again, just first five minutes, second half, still a bit sloppy. Um, but then a fantastic piece of play from Moussa. Um, long ball up, he brings it down, controls it well, cuts inside and a fantastic finish into the corner. Puts United one up. He gets his second just, I think it's two minutes later. Some good play down the left. We've got Aussie free. He manages to take a little bit of time, bit of composure, ball across, bundled in at the back post. 2-0 United and... From nowhere, really. Just two really good quality bits of attacking play, which shows us how good we can be when we're in sync, when we're working properly together. And at that point, you think, OK, we're going to kick on, we're going to control this game, and we're going to win. I'm not going to lie to you, we're in the away end, and we're all thinking, yes, now this is party time. Um, so, you know, second half goes on, we make a couple of subs. So, you know, Moussa is never going to have 90 in him. Uh, so he comes off on about 60 minutes for Billy. Um, a few minutes later, and Jai comes off for McGoldrick. And that sub pays dividends fairly quickly. I think uh, around 70 minute mark, um, McGoldrick plays a lovely ball down the right for Baldock, who again, you know, a bit of composure. He takes his time. He picks out his man, and Osborne's there at the back post to fire into the corner. 3 0. And now, you know, we really are coasting. The Barnsley fans are leaving. They're chanting for the manager out. It's all looking good. And then we went a bit united just for the last 20 minutes. Um, you know, they've scored one. It's a nice finish from their lad. I think it was uh, Devante Cole, who were uh, ghost of transfer windows past. Um, <laughs> so he scored a quite nice goal, taking it on the volley. Um, but from then we're panicking. As soon as they've scored one, you can sort of feel that panic. Uh, they get another one very quickly afterwards. You know, I sat in the away end, so I'm a long way away from it. But it looks as though we've just not put a tackle in. They've got ball on the edge of our box, just dribbling through people. Suddenly he's in on goal, smashes it home, and 3-2, and we're worried. You know, the third sub just shows that. I think it was... Um, I know it was Basham coming on. I can't remember who went off. <laughs> but that just shows you we were just packing that defence and really trying to see what we can do just to try and hold the game out. Um, and, you know, in the end, we have held on. Um, they didn't really put us under... <laughs> I was never really thinking they were going to score after their second goal, but we didn't need that pressure or that stress. Completely unnecessary. It's a good three points, but there are worrying signs in that sort of end to that game. We should not be letting a team like Barnsley, with all due respect, they were rubbish. Um, and, you know, their fans reflected that. They were chanting when they had a shot, never mind when they scored. So we've just got to be better, more sensible. We've got to sort our defence out. But overall, a good win and three really top quality bits of attacking players got of the points. Up the blades. 
thanks Ollie for the great second half recap. Before we get into player ratings though, I want to remind everybody, pick up your own Chef United Way mug. If there are any left, Nick will put the link down in the video description. Uh, if not, leave a comment and tell Hal and Nick that you want a Chef United Way mug. Get another run of those things going, they're awesome. Pick one up yourself. On to the player ratings. Starting in goal today, uh, Robin Olsen. We're going to give Olsen a six. Didn't have to do too much. Uh, had a couple saves, a couple stops. Uh, the goal post definitely helped us out in the second half um, on one of Barnsley's early shots. But overall, half decent game for Olsen. Unfortunately, we couldn't keep the clean sheet. Wouldn't really put him at fault for any of the goals. More on our defenders. Um, speaking of defenders, John Egan today gets a five and a half from me. Still good, still solid. Uh, want Egan playing out there every single week. That does not change after this result, but definitely not his strongest defensive performance. And then from uh, Ben Davies, same thing, four and a half from me. I felt like uh, he and Enda Stevens kind of combined for that first goal to, to kind of get confused, weren't communicating, whatever, um, and really let Barnsley uh, kind of come into their own. Uh, in that second half and really come back into the game. So uh, really need to see better performances from the two of them going forward. But overall, not a huge issue for me. Um, moving on to our wing backs, starting off with George Baldock on the right. I thought he had a really good game until that second Barnsley goal. Um, needs to be better on that one. So we're giving him a six, but the assist that he had, outstanding, spectacular the, the wherewithal to run down that side constantly throughout the game and make that cross over to Osborne. Um, just just a great play and reason why Baldock gets such a high score from me, a six today. Uh, and a Stevens on the other side, however, didn't uh, really get himself involved with the attack. He was definitely there, still a presence uh, in the wing, but uh, not as big as Baldock and definitely uh, at at fault for that first goal um, needs to be communicating better needs to be marking tracking his man uh, so just just not good stuff from from Enda Stevens today on to our midfield duo Norwood and Fleck um, kind of weren't super involved with the game uh, lost a lot of possession in the midfield between the two of them so we're going with five for Norwood four and a half for Fleck um, Overall, I think just the formation of having two up top, it almost looked like a 4-2-2 or, or a 4-2-4 or a 4-4-2 um, for the formation. But it really missing that uh, attacking midfielder of Morgan Gibbs-White really took the two of them out of the game today. And you saw that a lot of the play going up the sides or long balls over the top. Um, so not really a fault of their own, but just kind of bypassed. And when they did have chances, they were definitely still giving up possession. So we need to work on that for the two of them. Um, moving then into our attacking uh, players in Jai on the uh, right side, uh, really decent game, definitely was involved, had a lot of really good runs. Um, I thought he worked the ball well up to Musay, up to McBurney, um, and really connected with Baldock on that on that right wing. Um, so six and a half from me today for Njai. Uh, on the other wing, left side, Ben Osborne, as always, getting up and down the field, making the right runs. And I said it last week, we needed to see more creativity, more flair from him. We didn't really get the, the flair, but in the second half, he came out and we, we saw it. He got two assists. He gets a goal. Osborne really just owned that second half from an offensive standpoint. And I really like to see that uh, first half. It looked like just Ben Osborne running up and down, but the second half, he really came into it. So eight and a half from me today, but great job. Ben Osborne uh, really worked his way into that match uh, for our two strikers. Uh, again, I'm assuming that's how they were supposed to be lining up, but that's essentially how they looked out there. Uh, Ollie McBurney gets a six and a half from me. Uh, pretty decent. Actually did a really good job linking up and came deeper to get the ball a lot, but was still involved going forward. Had some good passes. Um, getting out to Osborne and Njai. So I thought he did a good job, six and a half uh, from me. And then Musay gets a nine, highest player rating. I wouldn't have necessarily said he was the player of the match, but the two goals in two minutes was outstanding. Uh, definitely was like searching for that third one. Um, and because of the silly yellow card, definitely taking him off, preventing any injuries was the right call. But a nine today, Musay needs to, you know, keep, getting on the pitch, keep scoring goals. And if that happens, he can really take this team and we can make a promotion push. So uh, onto our substitutes, uh, Billy Sharp came on, uh, did a half decent job. Wasn't really expecting much by the, by the time he came on um, until the end where we definitely needed to uh, see out the game and even try for another goal. Um, but six from me today, 
Uh, David McGoldrick also came on six and a half. I think he did a slightly better job um, linking the play up, especially as the clock was winding down. He always does a good job taking the ball, holding up possession. Um, he's he's the right kind of guy there that you want on the field when when it looks to be closing out games. Um, and then bringing Chris Basham on for McBurney was the right choice. Uh, Bash gets a six from me. Didn't have to do too much, but uh, it was the good call bringing an extra defender on uh, at the end. Uh, and that brings us to Slab. I think Slab got the uh, the lineup correct today. He, obviously, he couldn't choose uh, Morgan Gibbs White because of the two yellow card uh, penalty from the last game. So uh, he made the right decision uh, getting two new strikers on there. I think they worked well together. Um, and as we saw, Musse getting a couple goals. Osborne really came alive on that left wing. Uh, and the subs Slab made today were uh, were good ones. So uh, seven from me. And uh, yeah, let's let's move it on and see what uh, positives and negatives the rest of the crew have. Oh, thanks for that. Yeah, great stuff. Um, okay, on to positives and negatives. Um, wow. Um, yeah, it, with a game like that, it's not uh, it's not difficult to actually bring this out, is it? You know, the first half was a was much much of a disaster, really, wasn't it for us? You know, against a, a pretty poor Barnsley side, we just completely failed to to dominate anywhere on the pitch whatsoever. No attacks, sixty odd percent possession, uh, nothing really going forward, and only one tame shot on goal by uh, by Lise Musset. Um, there was nothing there, was there? You know, let's face it. We we were just regressive again. We were still in that mindset of being closed down badly uh, and and kept within our our final third of the pitch, passing it around the back four, up the sides of the pitch, not really getting anywhere. So it, so it was that you know with a, a real negative style of, of play really, which didn't give us anything. And and I'm, I'm sure everybody trudged off at half time thinking we're just going to duke this out into a into a nil nil draw. Um, which is ostensibly what it was, you know, two lower end championship sides duking it out. Really poor. Then, all of a sudden, we come out in the first eight minutes of the second half, I don't know what happened. I really don't. You know, Moussa finds himself and finds himself on the edge of the box and then creates this space. We don't see this, do we? And, it, and, and this is part of the positives, is the fact that he, he created the space, created the opening, created the gap, and then fired a cracking shot straight in the corner. How many times have we had a goal like that scored against us this season and then wondered where our goal scorer is? Step forward, Lise Mousset. Thank you. What, what, a, what a turnaround, really. Three minutes later, we're on the attack again with Osborne, who to me was a great positive. Uh, um, the man of the match for us, really, honestly. He's come on in leaps and bounds. I did think he peaked at around about a 5.5 5, 5 out of 10, really. Today, he was around about a 7. So anyway, there you go for marks out of 10. But... Goodness me, wasn't he on fire today? A real bonus for us. And he was right down that wing. And for once, we found a player in the box with that cross the uh, six-yard box um, ball. And it found Moussa coming in on the back post. And, uh, and again, you know, we, we've got this new lease of life in our, in our, in our new lease of Moussa. He's, um, he's suddenly tearing up the pitch. We went on the attack again. He was like a young gazelle sprinting away. And this was the, the tale of the second half, wasn't it? It was pace. Pace, we had uh, and Dai starting to turn things on and giving Styles a hell of a game. Pace, and we had Moussa showing pace. It was great to see. At last, we had something. But Bernie behind wasn't doing a great deal, apart from all this sort of spade work. And then we made some really, really daft substitutions. And the, and this is, the, this is the thing. I don't know where we are with substitutions are concerned. Why, do we, why are we so regressive and negative? And we have to slow the game down and bring someone like Sharp on and someone like McGoldrick, who today wasn't very good at all. Puzzled as that, because we were 3-0 up and we were cruising. We were coasting past Barnsley, no problem. And we looked in control of the game. In fact, we went in ourselves into game management mode, which I don't see us do a lot. So we were 3-0 up, and then suddenly we're 3-2. 3-2 through some pretty disastrous, lax, sloppy defensive um, phases where we failed to clear, we allowed Barnsley to come at us, allowed Barnsley to squeeze between the gaps. And this is the big thing, is the fact that I think that John Egan is always unsure and, and not a very good player in a four-man defence, which bore out really when they brought Basham on later on and he was in a five-man defence. We went to 5-4-1 and suddenly looked a bit more comfortable. I think it's a weak spot. It's a blind spot of, of, um, of John Egan. He doesn't like four-man defences. He can't play in it. There's too much, too much gaps. There's too much space for, to, for people to get through. And Devante Cole exploited that and he scored them two goals. You know, the first one was a cracker. 
The second one was avoidable. And this is the problem. This is the negativity that creeps into Sheffield United. Again, the other week we couldn't kill a game off and today we couldn't hold on to that lead and it was looking likely we were going to do another Aston Villa away and then give a 3-0 uh, lead uh, needlessly away and come away with, with just one point or even nothing. So we've, we've really got to, you know, bolt one on. The next game is, is key as, again as, as this one was. We've got to go and we've got to start capitalising on this. It's the three points today and, and that's a positive. That is a positive, the three points. It takes us up the table a bit further and gets us tucked up three. I think it's three points behind the playoffs. But we've got to start building on this now. We've got to start stop being sloppy and stop sharpening our game up and start controlling the game. It's, it's not good to see us suddenly in panic mode and struggling. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, up the blades. Hooray. Uh, Pompey here. Take care. Bye-bye. So where do we go from here then, Blades? Bit of a tough question after today, to be honest, because I thought, especially in the start of that second half, we looked excellent attacking-wise. But again, our defensive problems reared their ugly head again. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that was getting serious Aston Villa flashbacks from a few years ago when we um, went on to draw after being 3-0 up but alas we did not do that today and we did manage to get the three points but I think we can all agree on another day against better opponents that would have probably turned into a loss um, because that defence was all over the place wasn't it um, I think that's the main talking point after this game that it really needs to be sorted out we've known that for a long time but all the problems from last season it's like we've got this mentality that is just really fragile and really flaky and even with Davies coming in, we still have it really bad. Like, it doesn't seem to have shaken off. Um, it needs to be some of that sort. And I know it's going to take a while for Slav to really play the way he wants to um, because he needs, you know, his players that he's signed and he's kind of been left with a squad at the moment that can't really play the way he wants to. And I think we saw that with the substitutions today um, when Moussa came off and Sharp came on and when Ndai came off and McGoldrick came on. That's kind of when the game started to shift in the other direction, really, um, because we just couldn't play the way we'd been playing for most of the game. We had two play pacey players out wide. Um, so it's something we need to look at in January and especially going into the summer. Um, and hopefully he can get the squad in that he needs. Um, but overall, I think there was positives to take from the attacking side of our game because Musa scored an excellent first goal. It's a bit of a shame about his um, calf injury that seemed to have happened. He's come off and hopefully he can recover from that soon and get back to playing with us because he's one of the best strikers in the league if he can stay fit. Um, but yeah, I um, guess we just have to keep going um, hopefully get a clean sheet soon and we'll see where it gets us. But until next time, Blades, up the Blades.